For those of you who are with us for the first time or haven't been with us for some weeks, we're doing a study through the letter of James. Last week we talked about the tongue. This week I want to share with you what the Bible says about two kinds of wisdom. Two kinds of wisdom. We find this in James 3 verses 13 to 18. Let me read this to you. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder, and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. The question before us is this, which wisdom governs my life? Earthly wisdom or heavenly wisdom? The difference here is absolutely incredible. And that's what I want to share with you. First of all, earthly wisdom. Earthly wisdom is characterized by all we know of the world. Such wisdom is wisdom that are in the terms of the world system around us, which of course is governed by selfishness, by self-centeredness, by pride, by ego. In fact, the Greek word here that is used as wisdom describes an animal that would snap out at its prey or its enemy. And by the way, am I glad I looked up all my Greek tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. I had so many books around me, you'd have been proud of me. Thank you, Lord. Unfortunately, this wisdom that's characterized by the world also characterizes every person who lives outside Jesus Christ. So first of all, if you sit here tonight and you know that you've never taken Jesus Christ as your personal saviour, I've got to tell you to begin with, your life is governed by earthly wisdom. Now having said that, I'm going to tell you what it does. First of all, it's results in the heart. Such wisdom affects the very centre of that individual and produces, the Bible says, two things. First of all, bitter envy. Envy that in the sense of the word seeks to deprive the other person of what they have. For example, if you work on some committee and you have this envy toward another person, maybe the chairman, what you want above all else is to get them out of the chair so you can be the chairman. That's the sort of bitter envy that comes from earthly wisdom. Secondly, the Bible says, it produces selfish ambition selfish ambition. It's hard to pinpoint the exact meaning of this word. We don't really have an equivalent. But what we may say is this, this earthly wisdom produces in the individual self-will. Self-will that leads to destruction of themselves in the end. But you've met people like this. Always that person is seeking what they want they want. It's selfish ambition. It's an ambition that is totally centered in them. That's the result. Secondly, notice the qualities of this earthly wisdom because it's in verse 15. Now let me come back to what I've just said. If you're an individual living outside Jesus Christ, you are governed by this wisdom. And the Bible tells us here in verse 15 that such wisdom 
if that's what is governing you, is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. First of all, it's earthly. Again, the world around us always is self-seeking. It's always leading into selfish ways. It's always leading into a self-seeking life. It's earthly wisdom. But also it says it's unspiritual or the natural. Just as an individual who lives outside Jesus Christ is a natural person as against a spiritual person, so that person has a wisdom that is natural and is unspiritual. But I think the third one was the one that shook me up. We have to take a step further. Such wisdom, the Bible says, is of the devil. It's devilish. It's demonic in origin. That goes rather deep, doesn't it? If you think about it. You see, the source of earthly wisdom is the devil because in this age he controls the world outside us. Oh, I know God has the power over all, but this is his time. And it's his time because man's given it to him. And you only get that back when you come to Jesus Christ and give your life to him. And if as you sit here tonight, you know perfectly well you don't belong to Jesus, then you belong to the world system, you're the natural man, you're the natural woman, and the wisdom that controls your life originates from the devil. And that's why you find it so hard with your Creator and your God because you're out of step with him totally and completely and also this wisdom because it originates from the devil it does that instead of originating from the Lord God Almighty and there again there's a problem then there's something else if that is true what is the effect that it has on the life tells us in verse 16 let me read it to you for where they, you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. First of all, disorder, and let's take it a little bit further. Disorder, confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion. Have you ever worked in a situation where that's true? Maybe you do every day. Maybe the people who are around you are just like that. I know one or two of you shared. And just now I saw someone who could just fit into that. But it's not always in the world. You may find it in a church committee. It's not unusual. Where one or more individuals are controlled by earthly wisdom. I want you to know, if you're on that sort of church committee, you've got a long road ahead. It's going to be tough. It's going to be very difficult. Maybe, with a smooth tongue, they come to those committee meetings, they control them, and they do it by disturbing and breaking other personal relationships. And why do I know this? Because I used to do it. And I understand. Because I was controlled by earthly wisdom instead of heavenly wisdom. And so, have some of you been. Maybe you still are. And to get your own way, you will disrupt, you will cause confusion and disorder, and if you're doing that, it's because you're controlled by earthly wisdom. Also it says that such wisdom produces envy, every evil practice. There's a cause and effect here. If the cause is the earthly wisdom, the effect is the disorder and confusion on the one hand and every evil practice on the other. This type of wisdom becomes a real problem within a small community of people. And it's the sort of person who delights in cutting other people with their tongue. Have you ever met them? I'm sure you're not here tonight because you were dealt with last week. But that cutting tongue, just to get your own way, to put that one down and put that one down. And some of us have trained our tongues to do that very well. I know. 
because I've done it. <coughs> and also, I found that the Lord had to work on me to heal me. I cannot believe the enjoyment, the joy, the fun that we have in Jesus Focus Elders and Trustees meetings. I've told you before, I've come home from deacons meetings and I'm ready to throttle bet and kill the dog. <laughs> Why? Because of earthly wisdom. Mine and others. It wasn't only me. In fact, we had a friend who lived down the road who was on our deacons board at the church that we belong to. And he'd come up to us when he got home, just miserable. We'd just married, sit down, oh, meh. and I had to go and make him a milkshake before he could get rid of it. <laughs> and that's the church. But let's go on. That's negative. Let's be positive. What about the heavenly wisdom? First of all, verse 17, first part. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure. This comes from heaven. This is from God. And each one of you, when you come to Jesus Christ and take him as your Lord and Savior, you immediately move into the relationship with God, your Father and your Creator that's been missing. That's the whole point of salvation. If you have not taken Jesus Christ, you're out of step with him. When you accept Jesus Christ, you go back into step with the Creator and the Holy Spirit begins to move in your life. And this heavenly wisdom comes from God himself, and it is spiritual. But also, it comes through the Holy Spirit. He brings that wisdom into us. I'm not talking about the spiritual gift of wisdom. I am talking about heavenly wisdom that is here in James 3. That each one who receives Jesus Christ receives this as part of the package. But of course, you've got to use what you've got. And one of the biggest problems some of you are having is to walk in what Jesus has done for you. This wisdom comes from heaven. This wisdom comes through the Holy Spirit. And notice, it says it's pure, obviously. If it comes from the Lord our God and it's His wisdom, of course it's pure. But what does that mean? First of all, it means that if we have that wisdom, we are able to bear scrutiny in our lives. People can come and check us out. We're not going to be phonies. We're not going to wear masks. We're not going to wear facades. Anybody can come and check out our lives. Because the wisdom we've received from God is pure. Secondly note, what the heavenly wisdom produces within the individual or within the group. Now this is a long list, but it's incredible what is here. And I went through this piece by piece and I want to share some of it with you. This is all part of wisdom. First of all, it means we'll be peaceable. Peace-loving people. The exact opposite of the disorder, of the rebellion and the confusion, peace-loving. Now, if some of you are walking in Jesus, and you're not a peace-loving person. You're not using the heavenly wisdom you've been given. And if we need to check on that, we should ask your husband or wife or kids, because they know. Because they live with you. And they say, well, sometimes Dad's alright. And sometimes he's terrible. And we don't have that peace. It's the very opposite of everything it's saying here about earthly wisdom. Peaceable. Secondly, it says in my version, considerate. I was intrigued in this in the Greek, knowing how to forgive when strict justice would condemn. Have you ever met that type of Christian? Divorced! Get them out of the church! <coughs> Don't let them teach a Sunday school class! They've been divorced! Oh, but they're a new person in Jesus Christ! No! Strict enforcement. 
the condemnation. Now, the person who's considerate is the exact opposite of that. It doesn't mean they don't stand on the Word of God, but it does mean they stand on the love of God. We prayed with a friend in this ministry quite recently, and it was one of the most exciting experiences I'd ever had. I think for them as well as for those who were praying. Because they had incredible problems. And the problems stemmed from their forefathers. And their forefathers were a group of people from a land that will be nameless who were very, very religious. And were very correct in their religion. And were totally unloving in their religion. And that effect had come down through the family line and affected our friend. And as we prayed, and as the Holy Spirit set that individual free, suddenly they saw why they'd been critical, why they'd been so condemning. That was it. The exact opposite of considerate. It's knowing where not to apply that strict letter of the law. Because you're sensitive to the heavenly wisdom through the Holy Spirit. Also it says here, submissive, willing to yield to reason. I wonder if you're into this. Willing to yield to reason. True wi wisdom, this heavenly wisdom, is ready to listen. Is that you? How do you do with the children on this? I used to be bad. <coughs> you did it? Because I said so. Well, well, there's nothing to say. I mean, I was brought up like that, and they were brought up like that. But you know, I couldn't do that now. The Lord's messed it all up. <laughs> I can't believe the patience, because it's not me. That's not the way I was. I wouldn't listen. And maybe you won't. And if you don't listen, you haven't really been using this heavenly wisdom with our young people. Oh, I don't think for a minute this means you don't discipline them. But it does mean you listen. And how many times we react in anger instead of waiting to hear. And often we drop back to that strict letter of the law. The Word of God says, well yes we know, it also says God is love. And thank God that He's easier with some of us than we've been with some of our young people, or we would be in a mess. The fourth thing I found here was full of mercy, which is the word compassion. It's intriguing as you read the Gospels to find how many times the word compassion is used to describe Jesus. Now, if Jesus is dwelling in you and Jesus is dwelling in me, one of the things that should be shining out of us is compassion. And Malcolm Smith always says it is co-passion, feeling what the other person feels, seeking to sit where the other person sits so that you can understand them. I was a bit shaken when I got to the real depth of this definition and it means pity for the person in trouble even if it was their own fault. Oh, that went a step too far, didn't it? Well, she did. She deserves everything they, she got. Uh-uh. That's not the compassion. That is not this full of mercy. That's back to the old strict one again. And if you're working in this heavenly wisdom, you can't say that. And you have. And so have I. Didn't they expect to get the results? Mm -hmm. Compassion. Good fruits. I wonder what would happen there. Heavenly wisdom is mercy that issues out in practical help. It's interesting, isn't it, how very practical Jesus always was. And how sad some of his people are not. 
Oh, I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Off they go. And the person hasn't got a cent. But they're praying. And all they needed was a ten dollar bill. But we were too busy praying. The good fruits will issue out in practical help. And that's part of heavenly wisdom. And the next one is impartial or undivided to no one's own mind and to stand on it. You see, Christian wisdom is based on Christian certainties. It's not that we will be spiritually bullheaded, and sometimes some of you may be like that inflexible, but you know where you are because you know the book. And you know where you are because you know the Lord. And as you know the Lord and know the book, you know exactly where to stand. But it does mean we will never have spiritual pride. If you sit here with spiritual pride, you're a sinner. And I hope you confessed it and got cleaned up. And it does run through Christian people so very much. But to have certainties in my heart and mind that come from God the Father through the Holy Spirit and through His Son Jesus Christ. That's what it means here to be impartial, undivided. I know. It's interesting, isn't it? When Paul talks about this, he says, the one thing I want is to know Jesus Christ. To know Jesus Christ. For if I know Jesus Christ in that intimate way, these other things fall into place. And then the seventh thing here is sincere, without hypocrisy. The person who lives by heavenly wisdom doesn't have any poses. As I said just now, none of the masks, none of the facades. It's beautiful to see someone living in heavenly wisdom. But notice something else here. There's a harvest, it says in verse 18. A harvest that will be reaped. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Nothing can grow spiritually where people are at variance. In other words, when we come together in our trustees meetings, if we are not in agreement in the spirit, we might as well pack up and go home. And sometimes, you know, it's a difficult transition from the world you've been in to come into a meeting like that, to come into a committee meeting in the church. Maybe you're a vestryman, maybe you're on a board of deacons, maybe you're on the church council. And to transfer from the world into the presence of the Lord God Almighty and hear what He's saying by the Holy Spirit, that's not easy. And it takes time. But one thing is certain. Within the Christian context, if our Lord is going to work at all, there can be no bitterness, no contention, no strife, no malice, no gossip. If you're a gossiper, I would ask you to get cleaned up or move out because you're an awful nuisance. Because you destroy the work of the Lord, usually on the telephone. Now, what about the harvest? First of all, the Bible says, it's a harvest that is sown in peace. And it will be a harvest that is sown by people who love to have right relationships with others. You remember the word righteousness means that I'm in a right relationship with God. Yes, but if I'm in a right relationship with God, I'm in a right relationship with you. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And this harvest has to be sown in peace. And what will that mean? It calls for continual forgiveness. In our ministry, in your local church, in your home, you're going to be upset by others. They're going to hurt you. You're going to get resentments. That is part of life. The Christian walk is what you do with them. Do you let them fester inside like a cancer? Or do you release them to the Lord and ask Him to deal with them? And be cleansed. It also says, it will be raised in a harvest of righteousness. A harvest of right relationships. I don't know where you are in this. 
How do others see you? Do they see you as someone that they can love and feel easy with? Are they in right relationship with you and you with them? That's what it's saying. And you see, it goes those two ways. First of all, it is the vertical with God, but it is the horizontal with other people. And you can't say you're right with God when you're out of step with other people all around the place. It doesn't make sense. There is a harvest of righteousness. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons and daughters of God. That's a task that we have. Uh, let me ask you, are you producing a harvest in your life through heavenly wisdom? Or are you an individual still controlled by earthly wisdom? Where's the source? Are you living a life that is sown in peace and love among Christian believers? At home? Here in our groups? In the Bible study groups? And what's the harvest going to be that you're sowing? Because you're sowing something. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that by your grace we're not what we used to be. But we thank you that because of your love and mercy we're not yet what we're going to be. But for every one of us in this sanctuary may we be controlled by heavenly wisdom producing the fruit of a righteousness of peace. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.